everybody to a new Vala in GTK Plus tutorial. Let's get started by building our first application using elementary code. Let's create a new file, let's save it, and let's call it test.vala. So first, in order to create a GTK application, we need to have, first and foremost, one simple method that returns an integer. The method is called main, and the method name is necessary. It's the default method in GTK that gets initialized and gets triggered when a new application is started. As I said, the method name needs to return an integer, and this is one particular aspect of Vala. Every method, every variable, every class, we need to specify the type of value that is returned from that specific method or the type of specific variable. This is called a typed language, and we need to remember to specify every time what type of value gets returned. So in our case, this main method returns an integer, shorthand int before the name of the method. And of course, to not trigger any error, let's remember to return a zero at the end of the main method. If this main method for GTK returns zero, everything is correct. If it returns minus one or negative one, it means there's some error, something it's wrong and it's not working. And whenever the main method gets initialized by GTK, it automatically passes a series of arguments that we need to catch as a variable. This variable, like the method that we specified here, needs to be typed. We need to say to GDK what type of data we're expecting from this variable. And by default, this is always a string, but it's not just a string. It's actually, and this is gonna sound kind of confusing, but it's a sort of like an array of strings, or it's like a collection of string that can be split and we can do something in it. Basically, is a, is a series of argument that we can pass when we initialize our our application. First thing, we need to use a GTK to initialize our application. So let's write GTK dot init, and this is a built-in method of GTK, and we need to pass the reference of the arguments that we're getting from the main method. Sometimes you could see that in some tutorials or in some code example, the Vala file writing use GTK, and this looks kind of like a PHP file, and then if you use the use GTK, we can avoid to specify GTK for every type of method. We can use built-in methods that are dependent on the GTK class without re-specifying the GTK class. I personally don't like to use this because it makes the code less readable and I always like to have the actual namespace of the class that I'm using the method from so it's really easy to know that this init method comes from GTK. Now let's define a bunch of things inside this application that right now it's completely empty. Let's define a window that it's gonna be printed inside our main application. So let's create a new variable called window and inside here we can initialize a new GTK window class. And we know this is a class because other than having the empty brackets here, has also the new declaration before calling the GTK window. So we are initializing a new instance of the GTK window class and we're storing this instance inside the variable window. Sometimes you could find some code that instead of using the typed var, it shows or uses the type of the actual classes that we're initializing. This could be kind of confusing, but this is kind of like the recommended approach because this window variable is not containing a variable like a regular generic random variable. It's only containing and we only accept a GTK window. So we are type hinting our window variable as a default GTK window. For now, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to just use var, I'm going to keep it really, really simple. But then down the line, we're going to start making things more complicated. Now we can define a bunch of attributes from our window instance, and the attribute that I want to define is the title, so let's call it, this is my uh, Vala test, something like that, semicolon at the end, then the window, we can define uh, the property border underscore width, that it's equal to 10. Then the window, we need to specify the window position because whenever this application runs, the first location that it's gonna run is probably is gonna be like up left here at the monitor. We wanna have it at the center of the screen that it's like around here. So I want this to say, hey, the window underscore position attribute has to be at the GTK dot window 
position that it's a globally accessible attribute of GTK in the center. Then we can define some default size or so set default underscore size of these window and say is 350 width with um, 80 pixels in height. And then we can say that whenever this window gets destroyed, so it receives a signal called destroy, we should connect it to a GTK main quit. And this feels really confusing because we're not actually writing anything of this, but I'm gonna explain this a little bit later. Just let's conclude this first application, let's trigger it, and then we're gonna analyze the code. So now we need to say to the window, hey, show all. So everything that's inside this window, the window itself is gonna be visible, and then we can trigger our main method by saying GTK main. Perfect, okay, let's open the terminal and open in the built-in terminal of code. And inside here, I'm gonna go inside my folder. Uh, it's Vala GTK tutorial, perfect. Now, in order to trigger this little application, we need to use our Vala compiler. The Vala compiler is called Vala C, and we need to package all the external libraries, all the external things that we're using in order to build our application. In our case, we're just using GTK that is not baked, is not available directly inside Vala. We need to tell to the terminal, hey, whenever we compile, with the Vala compiler, our test file, we need to include, we need to package GTK3 in order to use that specific class. We need to pass an argument that it's called PKG, and we need to say, hey, let's package also the GTK plus dash 3.0, so version 3.0 of GTK, and then we need to specify our file that in our case is test.vala. If we hit enter, nothing happens because actually this code will not run our application, but will compile our application and make an executable file that, as you can see here in the list of files, I have this test that is not readable. It's an executable file, so we can execute it by pointing to the current location and say, hey, execute the test file. If we hit enter, look what we have here. This is our GTK application with our title, the size that we defined, and because we didn't specify anything and we didn't put anything inside, it's there. We have our application. If you don't have, if you're on another platform, not like Elementor US, yes, you don't have the uh, closing button, you can close and shut down this application by hitting in the terminal Control C. Now the application was terminated, but if the application works as expected, you have the closing button, you can simply close it, and also the terminal will free itself. So let's analyze a little bit all the things that we did here in order to generate this really simple application and try to understand this code. First of all, we need to specify a main method that accepts a bunch of arguments that can get passed, and we're gonna see how to pass arguments down the line, and these methods need to return an integer. That's why we're returning zero. If it's zero, everything is fine, nothing was, uh, nothing triggered an error, nothing created an issue, so it's not returning negative one or minus one, and the script is running properly. Then we are generating a new class, a new instance of a default GTK window, and we're storing inside the window. And then we're defining a bunch of attributes of this window, and this is the perfect time to actually start dipping our toes inside Valadoc. So if we open our browser and we go to valadoc.org, if we search for GTK, that is the library that we're using, and we open the GTK class, you can see here we have a bunch of interfaces, a bunch of classes, attributes, models, and blah, blah, blah. And I will be the first to admit that the Vala documentation is not the most easiest thing to read. It takes a little bit of time to get used to it, and it comes with a little bit of a deep learning curve. So let me show you what I usually do. So we know that we need to trigger a new GTK window and we have to store it inside a variable window. So why don't we search for actually the GTK.window? Perfect, we have here the GTK.window. And 
completely ignore this <laughs> diagram here that shows how it's built. This can only confuse you at the beginning. It's gonna be really useful later, but for now, just ignore it. Let's scroll all the way down. Here, you usually find the description of the GTK class. You find an example if has a Glade example, like you can build this class by using a UI file, but we're not gonna do it, so let's completely ignore it. You have some example of, hey, this class comes with a bunch of CSS nodes that we can analyze, and there are some screenshots that show you, hey, this is what's gonna happen. Also, most of the times you have a really cool example that you can just copy paste inside your code editor and trigger the Vala compiler to build this little example. What I want you to focus right now, it's learning how to read the documentation in terms of the properties, the static methods, the creation methods, the regular methods, and if we scroll all the way down, GTK window has a lot of methods, the signals. So what we did here, we simply created or instantiated created a new GTK window. So the new is telling us that this is a creation method. So if we scroll all the way up to the creation method, we see here that we have a publicly accessible window method that accepts a window type, but the window type is already set as a default or top level. That's why we're not passing anything. And the window method is saying create a new window which is a top level window that can contain other widgets. Perfect, so if for example you wanna add a title like I did here, let's just simply search on the page in these attributes, let's search for the word title and you will find the, the attribute title in the list of properties. This is a list of accessible properties that are attached to that specific window. Here we have the publicly accessible title that is a string, is typed, hinted as a string, and this attribute can be set and get. When you see something like that, it will most likely mean that this class has also a method called set title or get title. In fact, if we search set underscore, title, there you go. And if you search also get underscore title, we have it here. And these three methods, title, set title, and get title are basically exactly the same. They do exactly the same thing. Or actually, to be more accurate, the property title can be set or can be get with those methods or directly by accessing the property title because it's a public property. So for example, in our code, we could, instead of writing something like this, we could say window set underscore title. And the set underscore title accepts an argument that has to be the title. And let's pass it, this is my new title. We open our terminal again and we run the Vala compiler again, we trigger the test we have this is my new title because we change it. So we set exactly the same property, but we use the set. We use it as a method and we didn't use it as a property. So this is the first thing that you should learn from the Vala docs, that if a property has a set or a get, it means that you can use both. For example, the startup ID has only a set. You cannot get the startup ID. The window type property can be set in the constructor of the class and can be get, cannot be set outside the constructor, cannot be updated and so on. So this is a first hint on how to read this documentation that can be really, really complicated. To continue inspecting our code, the same things I did for the border, the windows and the set default size, I just got all the information from the documentation. The window position here is particular because we're using um, default attribute of GTK. And in order to understand this, let's simply search in the GTK window, the window position property. So if we search it here, we have it here. And we can see that this public property also having a set and get, other than being able to set this property, is type hinted as a window position and this thing is clickable. So if we go to window position, you will see immediately that we are inside a completely different page of the documentation and this can throw you off a little bit, but let's take it step by step. First, we know that this method belongs to GTK because we see here in the three view, we start from the GTK, this is the package that if you remember is the same exact package we're including inside our compiling of the Vala compiler 
Then we have the GTK class, the window position method, and these are all the values available. So whenever we need to tap a window position center of the window position of the mouse of the window position none, we need to specify every single step. We need to specify the full concatenation of these methods coming from the GTK class. That's why we're writing GTK window position and then all uppercase center. Then we're doing something extra. We are connecting a signal called destroy. So if we go back to our GTK window and we search for destroy and we scroll all the way down to the list of signals, you will see that, hey, the method destroy is not here. What is happening? But the method destroy is actually working. It's properly there because we're not getting any error. And when the Windows is destroyed, the actual application is closed. So the method destroy is not here because the method destroy wasn't defined inside uh, the GTK window. It doesn't belong to the GTK window, but belongs to an inherited class that is part of the GTK window. Do you remember the first graph right at the top? Well, this is the diagram that tells you how the GTK window is built. So the GTK window is dependent on the GTK bin and the container, the, the widget, and all these all these classes that are extended by the window or are inherited by the GTK window are implemented the ATK implementer, the GTK buildable, the glib object, and blah, blah, blah. This is all shenanigans, it's super confusing, but you have to understand that if the GTK window extends or it's in everything, whatever happens in the GTK widget, if we want to use a method from the GTK widget inside the GTK window, we can do it because those are accessible. So if we scroll the way down at the end of the documentation of whatever class we're looking at, we have a list of inherited members. And if we open here, we're going to have a list of all the methods and classes and attributes that we can tap from those classes that are part, that are building the GTK window without the necessity of redeclaring them as signals inside the GTK windows as well. So if we open uh, the GTK container, we search, oh, these are signals and you can see the difference with the little icons. This is really important and really helpful. The little lightning bolt are signals. There's no destroy method. So let's open GTK widget. Oh, a lot of things in the GTK widget. There you go. We have the destroy method inside the GTK widget. So in our code, whenever we're saying, hey, the destroy, when the destroy signal gets triggered from the window, we can connect it. This is a signal how signals sort of work in C or C++ or in other typed languages. When a signal is triggered, when a signal starts, it emits something and we can connect the emission of the signal from a specific object and uh, tell uh, to the signal whatever we want to do. We could also write something like this and it looks kind of like an arrow function, but it's really, really cool. Uh, and we can say that, hey, whenever the window destroy is connected, let's call, uh, and let's close the curly brackets, let's call the GTK main quit and semicolon at the end. This is a longer version and we can write it like this, open and closing the regular brackets. If some variable, some attributes it's passed inside the specific signal, we can pass it here. And inside the curly brackets, we can execute our code. This is important, this is interesting if we need to execute something else before the GTK main, but if a signal is connected to one single execution, one single method, we can write it as it was before. Just simply pass it normally inside as it was a property without the regular brackets. Automatically, Vala will recognize that we wanna trigger this and this is a method, so we'll tap the main method. Then the window show hole is basically saying to, hey, this new window, when we generate a new widget, we need to say show all because we need to say uh, visualize this widget, render this widget, and render whatever it's inside this widget. If we don't do the show all, if we add something inside, we'll not show anything. And then here we're simply calling the main method of the GTK. So once again, if we compile and then we run the test, there you go, we have our GTK window.
So I know this was kind of like a boring lesson because I explained a lot, I didn't code much, but it's important to try to understand what we're doing here and how to read the Valadoc documentation because it's full of really important information and important stuff. And whenever you get lost in building something with Vala or GTK, you need to know how to browse the documentation and how to read it and how to unstuck yourself, <laughs> how to understand what to use and when to use it and why something doesn't work. So now that we have the gist of it and it's really, really simple and really, really basic, we're not going to follow this example here, but we're going to start actually coding our real application. So from the next lesson, I'm going to completely delete this. I'm going to set up the project with Mason and I'm going to create a proper folder structure. And we're going to see how to use multiple classes to initialize a proper application, use Granite library from elementary OS and organize our code better. So that's pretty much it for this lesson. I hope you guys liked it. If you want, give it a thumbs up or subscribe. And until the next one, as usual, happy coding.